guys, it's Kelly here, and I am back with another video for Marker Pop, and today we're going to be using Let It Snow by The Greeting Farm. And this is the first Greeting Farm set I have ever owned, and I have to tell you, I think it's completely adorable, <laughs> and uh, I couldn't wait to get this bear inked up. I just thought um, it was super cute with his little mug and scarf, and uh, it gives you um, the ability to, uh, you know, doodle, make it your own. So I wanted to give him a little partner in crime there, so just have a um, an extra piece of packaging. I'm going to do the mirror technique. So I'm going to ink up my stamp. I'm going to stamp it on to my acetate, and then I'm going to flip it over and um, stamp it with the acetate. Except you have to be careful. If you can see there up top where it smushed, um, when you're stamping on acetate, it's very slick surface, so you have to go straight down, straight up, and it's very easy to smudge it. So, uh, fortunately, it's also very easy to clean it up. If you just take um, some alcohol and a uh, cotton pad, rag, whatever, you can just wipe it off. I use the same packaging over and over again every time I do the mirror stamping. I just have it on the side of my desk, just chilling, waiting for it to get used. So this time, the um, impression, sorry about my head there, uh, I was trying to make sure everything was lined up correctly. And I'm not so much rubbing it as I am patting it because I don't want to smear those lines. So I'm just trying to give it some good pressure. Um, and you can see it comes up, it's a very light image, but that's okay because it gives us enough that we can uh, recreate it. I wanted to make his partner a little lady bear. So I wanted to give her a bow. I didn't worry about masking it because uh, that other Im or uh, other impression was so light that um, I knew once I colored over it, it wasn't really going to show through. So I just outlined the whole image with a, a Copic multi-liner because I'm going to be um, watercoloring and those are waterproof. I'm going to make her scarf uh, a little polka dot and I'm going to give him some stripes. Um, and you can do this, you know, whatever pattern you like, or leave them solid, or one pattern, one solid. I mean, it's really totally open to how you want your image to look. Um, since I'm more of a, a clean and simple card maker, I feel like adding these little details help make my cards more interesting, because my layout isn't always super interesting. So I'm just going to, you know, do those little um, stripes. And then I'm actually going to be using Zig uh, Clean, Clean, Clean Clear, <laughs> Clean Clear markers today um, to do my watercoloring. And how I like to approach them, I like to use them with water. You don't need to use them with water if you want more intense color. But I, uh, that's how I prefer to use them. So I lay down um, a little bit of my lightest color, and then uh, I went back in with my dark. I didn't go out as far as I should have when I was doing this um, with the lightest color, so I end up having to go back in and do it again. It's not a big deal. It's not a ton of moisture, um, and I'm working on Canson, Aquel, Aquarel, I never know how to say that, um, watercolor paper, so it's it's totally not a huge deal. So I'm just going to go in and stretch out that lighter color um, a little farther into my image. Um, they are larger, so you want to make sure you, you know, you're putting down enough pigment to carry uh, coloring the whole uh, image. So once I'm done with that, I am using a number two round brush from the Artist Loft. And how I prefer to do my coloring with these is to lay down uh, water in the um, areas with no pigment. So just where it's clean, I'm putting clean water. And then I will take the clean water to my pigment versus putting a wet paintbrush into your pigment and then carrying it out. Um, if you do that, you're going to get one... Um, color all throughout the whole image and that's not what I wanted. I wanted the uh, the natural blending or bleeding that the watercolors do on their own. So um, that's just the best approach that I have found for it. Maybe you do want you know more solid color than you know start in the pigment and pull out. You want less um, or more variation to your watercoloring. Start in the clean area and go into the pigment. So here I'm just, um, you know, I'm doing the same thing every single time I'm starting in the clean area. And these zig markers, they put down a lot of pigment and it stays on your marker, like a lot. <laughs> so um, you do need to be cleaning your brush off in between uh, each area in order for it to stay clean. 
and then um I actually at one point um uh, I don't her ear did not get a whole lot of pigment so I actually just like dip my brush in one of the areas where it's wet and carry it um over to her ear because like I said they're they're immensely pigmented and um it's it's just it, they run they run everywhere <laughs> um which if that's the look you're going for is kind of awesome you just um I guess need to know your medium where like stress inks do run just not as much these um the color really changes when you add water and like I said if you don't if you want a more true color you don't have to use water with them here I wanted to um make her oh here's where I'm going to take it and carry it up to the ears <laughs> um but I wanted there to be more shading so I just scribbled the darker brown um, onto an acrylic block and then I can add water and then pick that up um, with my paintbrush and use it to just drop in the areas that are still wet. Um, it's important to note that my areas are still wet that's why they're blending naturally. If you try to add more pigment to an area that is dry you're going to get a harder line which again depending upon the look you're going for is totally okay. It just depends on what you like. I don't when I'm coloring um, images I don't like that hard line if I'm doing something a little more loose with florals or something then I like a mix of hard and soft edges but if I'm coloring um, you know something like this where it's a black outline image I'm, I'm gonna take a pass on the uh, on the hard edges so once I'm done doing that I went ahead and colored the um, gray bear and I did that oh I'm gonna add some brown to her, her little uh, coffee well it actually ends up being hot chocolate because I add some marshmallows at the end. But um filling in those coffee cups. And then I did go ahead and color the um, gray bear. I did everything exactly the same way. But um, I didn't show it because watercolor is really time consuming. This whole card took me about an hour and 20 minutes to from start to finish. So completely putting it together. And um, I just didn't assume anybody would want to we have to watch an hour and you know 20 minutes of me doing watercolor. <laughs> um, so here I'm just I'm using the black marker to do their noses. I left a little bit of a highlight on top so I'm only adding the pigment on the bottom and then a little bit to the sides. And uh, like I said I colored him exactly the same way and now I'm going to start in on their um, what's the word? Their accessories. That's what I was trying to think of. Their accessories. Uh, so for um, this red, I have the 36 set, and the red that came with it is this carmine red. It's um, when you add water to it, it really turns into pink, like bad. Um, which is, I mean, dependent again upon what you're using it for, can be pretty, but I wanted it to be a bit deeper. So I'm actually using a brown as my darkest shadow for my reds, um, and this is just to give it that more red feel I really do need to purchase um, I know they have like a scarlet or a burgundy um, a friend of mine had it at a retreat so I know it exists <laughs> um, and I really should probably buy that one but it didn't come in my set so I'm just going with what I got making it work uh, the wonderful thing about watercolors I, I, well there's many but one of them is that you can blot up color if you feel like everything got too dark and I did feel like her scarf there was no variation it was just one solid color in smaller areas it's really hard guys I mean it just is it's really hard to get any sort of blending um because you don't want to add too little pigment but you don't want to add too much too much water too little water blah 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 I mean you know what I'm saying so if something gets a little too color saturated just blot it up just get a dry cloth and, and pick it up and it'll pick up the moisture as well as pick up some pigment. So it can really be a, a lifesaver if you have added maybe a bit too much like I did there. So here I'm just going in with his stripes. I decided that I was going to do them um, yellow, green, and red. This is a um, set that says let it snow but I ain't ready for snow yet. You're lucky I'm even acknowledging the fact that it's fall here. <laughs> because I love summer so much and it makes me so sad to see it go every year. So I went ahead and did the stripes and then I just carried that um, over into her scarf as well. Uh, I'm a big fan of carrying your colors throughout your card. I feel like it gives a more cohesive look. Um, so that's what I did. I just stuck with the, with the same colors for all of their accessories. 
and uh, here later on in the yellow I did get some red bleeding into it and I fixed it again just by blotting it up and letting it dry um, and moving on you know and adding adding more um, pigment to get more yellow and less orange so they're, um, they're little mugs I decided I was going to color them red and green and they would be darker where they are holding the mugs so um, you know like I usually do I went through and now I'm going to start in the clean area and then pull that down into the pigment um, for hers I actually think that I just did it all in one fell swoop because there was so there was just such a little area here I'm attempting um, which I did not like I'm not gonna lie to you uh, you know we all try to do different things some things work some things don't I'm not gonna pretend like this worked for me it didn't I'm trying to do the ground to give them an area to stand on and um, I'm going to go in with a little bit of a bigger brush. Uh, this is how I get soft edges in um, my background's larger areas. I lay down a lot of clean, clear water first, and then I go back in and um, touch the pigment, um, starting with the clean area down, just like the same way that I shaded my images. And then that way the color blooms out into um, the clean, clear water. I just couldn't get the depth that I wanted with this. So you know what that means we're going with the Copics and um, there's nothing wrong with mixing mediums you know whatever look you're trying to achieve if you can get it all with watercolor or you can get it all with Copics or you mix the two like again this is going to be whatever works for you and I'm much more comfortable with my Copics when it comes to shadows and shading so that's what I'm doing I mean that it, it worked out fine it doesn't you know it isn't a a drastic difference between oh like you can totally you know tell they don't go together they don't mesh well they they mesh well just I mean they mesh just fine together so here I'm doing a little bit of a shadow um, onto the bears just to give them just a little more depth you know this is like I said I'm a clean and simple card maker so I gotta do what I can got to do what I can to make my cards interesting <laughs> um, and even here I originally um, you know did their shadows and um, I didn't like the um, depths of their nose I didn't feel like I got really good shading there so I went and fixed that because um, you know at the end of the day you got to be happy with the result and don't give up on it just because you couldn't do it with watercolors or you know you couldn't do it with whatever medium you started with like hang on to those babies keep working them and you know everybody um, comes up with things that they don't like or aren't sure of or whatever so I just keep sticking in there until I'm happy with it added um, some white gel pen just to add a little white highlight to their uh, noses where the light would hit and here I'm gonna go back in and I'm gonna fix this ground because I'm just not pleased so I'm using the same um, warm grays that I used before for the shadows and um, just putting down a lot more color and I really ended up liking this so much better like I can't even tell you it was just so much better um, and you know it just it makes that coloring pop a little bit more to me to have those those shadows and, and that shading and I just went lightest to darkest darkest to lightest just like I always do um, with my Copics I feel like that gives me the best blend and um, then I decided I was going to um, make them um, oh right the coffee mugs that wasn't dark enough either like at all and then um, like a couple little dots add some little marshmallows in there I wanted my little bears to be in love they had the cutest little um, stay cozy uh, sentiment that was included in the set and I thought it was adorable since I wasn't going for a winter card I was going more for fall so I went ahead and stamped that. I'm sorry it got weird. My head was in the way. I was trying to line it up. I used a um, stitched die uh, to cut that panel down and then I'm just adding some um, foam to it. Uh, I'm real careful when I do this to make sure I get the corners because I don't want it to lift up on me and I'm mounting that on just some uh, craft cardstock and I decided to offset it a little bit again for some more interest so that's pretty much the card I did add some Wink Estella um, all the colors I'll, I'll use will be listed on the Marker Pop blog and thank you so much for joining me I hope that you guys have a wonderful day